Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter five talking about improving the test process and continuing ahead with the next segment of it that is 5.2, Test Improvement Process. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be just getting started with understanding that what exactly this improvement process is all about, what kind of different models do we have which we can actually follow in order to improvise and organize issues test process. Well, on the other hand, of course, we can also talk about the different ways by which improvement can actually be uh, driven about and how exactly an organization can look forward to identify the necessary details, which can actually tell them that these are the areas which need improvement at any point of time. The very first section here, we're getting started with the basic introduction to the improvement process and identifying that what kind of models do exist in order to help you improve your test process within the organization. Just an organization uses a testing to improve the software quality, process improvement techniques can be selected and used to improve the process of the developing software and resulting software deliverable. So as we do understand from the statement that software testing is a common way to improvise the quality of the product. Similarly, the process which is improving the quality of the product needs to be improvised right from time to time. Now, we actually have to gather all that necessary information which need to be there with you in order to set up a particular process in an optimized way and produce that quality product, you know, again and again all after the other so that's where you know it's really critical to take into account that what kind of steps will you be following will there be a specific or standard model which you may need in order to determine that on what basis are you going to you know improvise your process and that's what this particular section is going to talk about. The process improvement can also be applied to the testing process. Different ways and methods are available to improve the testing of the software and of the systems containing the software. These methods aim at improving the process and hence the deliverable by providing guidelines and areas for improvement. So now you do understand that there are certain methods and methodology or maybe models which can actually set up with certain guidelines which will tell you that, that these are the things which you can actually look forward to and adhere to in order to call it as improvisation. Now, there are different models to do that job. So testing often accounts for a major part of the total project cost. However, only limited attention is given to the test process in various software process improvement models such as CMMI, which stands for Capability Maturity Model Integration. Now, that's another well-established uh, organization which gives you uh, accreditation based on your process engagement or improvement you start with level one and you reach out up to the level five and where level five stands for the highest which is the optimized level and you are just something like working on minimizing your mistakes rather than adding any more value to your process so there are a lot of levels which you will be exploring in no time in the upcoming tutorials so the test improvement models such as Test Maturity Model Integration, which is TMMI, which is also another uh, similar body like CMMI, which has the same thing. And it's a, basically a subset of that. Systematic Test and Evaluation Process, which is STEP. Critical Testing Process, CTP, and TPI Next were developed to address the lack of attention to the testing in most software processes improvement models. Prior, properly used, if in case used so, these models can improve a degree of cross-organization matrix that can be used for benchmarking the comparisons. The models presented in this syllabus are just for the, uh, you know, understanding the purposes of the uh, improvement models, but uh, ISTQB officially does not recommend that which one is the best to use or these are the specific models which any organization make use of. So remember one thing team, no matter which certification you're talking about, uh, ISTQB officially does not recommend about development models, improvement models, or any such criteria which uh, could be like, you know, used as a part of the syllabus, but just make sure that the, the any references which are used are only for knowledge purpose, but ISTQB does not officially recommend that this is the best and you can make use of it so what we want to tell you more here that these are the different models which we'll be actually covering as a part of our this chapter so you can look forward to these tutorials coming up next 
The most important thing here is a little bit getting into the detail of the process improvement and understanding how exactly this can be done and what could be the different ways of doing it. So process improvements are relevant to the software development process as well as the testing process. That means it's just not limited to improvising the test process. Some of the things which are related and uh, dependable on a lot many other development activities. I think we do remember from the foundation level that uh, each uh, we have our testing activities well aligned to those of the development activities and we do conduct a lot of uh, uh, pre-equipped activities like reviews static testing and all where we contribute though we are from the testing process but being a tester it's our you know main objective to prevent defect as well and we try to coordinate with other teams and try to gather as many information as possible and try to contribute in terms of finding the defects and improvising the documentation. Now, same way here, the test process models or the improvement models which we may have here will not be just limited to the testing process. It may contribute to the overall software development lifecycle or I can say that it may rely on that in order to you know, add value to the testing process. Now, there is the very first thing what we're talking about is the Deming Improvement Cycle, which stands for PDCA, or which basically goes like plan, do, check, act. Now that's a Deming Improvement Cycle, says that you first plan for anything, then you work on it, and then you check that what is that you were supposed to do and what is that you have done, and then act upon it so that you can actually get what you wanted to get so plan do act check act pdca is a very common development model or improve improvement cycle which an organization can make use of even if they're not following this deming improvement cycle even if you have some internal stages to be called as pdca you do follow that so there are a lot of things which you can actually cover as a part of it like making effective plans and monitoring it from time to time and working according to the plan and then trying to rectify your mistakes and see that what is that you could not meet as per the defined plan. So has been PDCA has been used for many decades and it is still relevant when tester needs to improve the process in use today. One premise for process improvement is the belief that the quality of the system is highly influenced by the quality of the process uh, used to develop the software. Improved quality in the software industry reduces the need for the resources to maintain the software and thus provides more time for creating more and better solutions in the future. So, of course, there is no question else that, you know, a quality system or quality product which you deliver is highly, highly influenced by the great process. And, of course, if your process is weak and process needs amendments or needs improvement, of course, it will have flaws and it will have loopholes which will definitely not lead you to uh, deliver a quality product. So it may result into rather project risk and that risk can result into any kind of blocker or probably delivering a failure prone software as well. Now, process models provide a place to start improving by measuring the organization process capability against the model. So model has got certain standards uh, to be met and then you have your practices on the other hand and you try to can map them with the model statements or guidelines that how well are you sticking to that, how well you are aligned to that and if in case you see a deviation, you try to improvise that part in order to, uh, you know, improvise your process. So basically adhering to those standards which you follow from a particular model is what you call it as improvising your test process from time to time. And keep keep optimizing it as far as you're exactly uh, meeting the expectations of the guidelines. A process assessment leads to a process capability determination which motivates a process improvement. This may invoke a subsequent process assessment to measure the effect of the improvement. Now, this is a very important thing to be understood that a process assessment is the very first and foremost thing which you need to start with in order to analyze that what are the areas, what are the critical points where you need improvement and then apply the capability determination that what kind of improvements you can actually have. Not always when you have a problem, you can have a solution to that. But sometimes determining that is very important that do we have a solution for this? Can we do something to improvise this or not? And so on. And then coming back again, like after applying these improvements, you do conduct an assessment once again to check that how effective your steps was in order to improvise your process. If in case you think that your steps were not enough, then you try to 
look into something more uh, better to do in order to meet your expectations. Well, that was to just give you a quick outline of the understanding here. But last but not the least, of course, uh, we have got types of process improvement. But here, I'm not talking about classifying them. It's just like that. There are two different ways by which you can improvise your process or you can get some references or data which can help you to do the process improvement. So the use of assessment model is a common method which ensures a standardization approach to improve the test process using tried and trusted practices. So we saw some of them like STEP, CPI, uh, CTP and uh, TPI next. And these are some of the standard things which you can actually make use of here in order to follow these models and determine that uh, how exactly to improvise because these are very well tried for a long time and well practiced uh, trusted source of information to improvise your test process well the process improvement models are categorized into two types that means the process reference model or the content reference model so number one is the process reference model which provides a maturity uh, measurement as a part of the assessment in order to evaluate an organization's capability compared with the model, to evaluate the organization within the framework and to provide a roadmap for improving the process. Now, if we see that, this is completely going from the point of process reference model, which provides the maturity measurement as a part of the assessment. So maturity is basically uh, in terms of determining that no matter you can do an activity, but how well you can do it is what you call it as maturity. That means everyone can run, but not everyone is like Usain Bolt. <laughs> you can be a sprinter or something, right? So we just try to be as mature as possible, no matter what you're doing, probably you're writing test cases, you are writing uh, test data and trying to execute certain things, you know, managing your defects, managing your version control, a uh, lot many other things, but we just try to be as precise as to the point as possible. On the other hand, the content reference model, uh, which provides business-driven evaluations of an organization opportunities to improve, including some cases, benchmarking against the industry averages using objective measurements. So this goes more of from the point of comparison between the uh, industry standards and uh, different other organization practices, which you see that when an, an organization can do this thing in a much better way than why we, why we cannot. So we just try to find out that what is that which is holding us back to do it in that particular manner and try to improvise it much better so that you can actually uh, align to that and see how you can be more competitive in the world of, uh, you know, technical world today. So this evaluation can be used to create a roadmap for improving the process. Of course, that can definitely be used. Like, you know, either you set up your you know, standards or get it from somebody else is what we say. So the same way here, you can actually compete with or you know, compare your standards with the other organizations or the practices which are happening uh, across the world and then make use of it. Now, finally, the test process improvement can also be accomplished without models by using, for example, analytical approach or retrospective meetings. Now, it's not really mandatory that you need to have a uh, process model or improvement model in your organization to be optimized or de be kind of improving from time to time within the development process. You can also have some of the activities like the approach used, like analytical approach, which goes more with the risk-based analysis and all, or even retrospectives are basically conducted to collect the, you know, lessons learned from each sprint during agile methodology. And uh, you collect all this information to basically add more value to the uh, improvement of the upcoming sprint. So it's not mandatory that you should only have models to improvise your test process. Sometimes you can just do with some minor activities within your practices and development models. Well, so that was all to talk about from this particular section. Of course, uh, we will be having more to talk about each of the models which you are covering and uh, we'll be getting into the details of that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.